Hey guys, welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Chicago Comic and Entertainment Expo. My name's Chuck from the YouTube show Chuck Load of Comics. And I'm Ryan from the Chumpcast. All the shows you see this weekend are going to be simulcast on the YouTube show Chuck Load of Comics and anywhere the Chumpcast can be found. Joining us here in the booth, first guest of the convention from Mad Magazine, the one, the only, Mr. Tom Richmond. Tom, we got to make this an annual thing. Uh, yeah, that'd be fun. Last time we saw you, came to our booth. We were sitting down with the guys from All Yeah Comics. We talked a lot about uh, your history with Mad Magazine. What we didn't get to talk a lot about was sort of your process, uh, how you approach uh, projects, how you, you know, the first thing you look at when you're doing a caricature. So hopefully... A little bit later on, we might do some sketching. Sure. But uh, talking about Mad real quick, uh, Mad had a crazy year last year. I mean, it was a total sort of a flip, the script on Mad Magazine, running after, what, like 50-something years. They relaunched under a, a modern size, and they don't even do the movie caricatures anymore? Yeah, a lot of changes. You know, a couple years ago, they moved from New York uh, to Burbank and, uh, you know, to the D.C. Comics offices, and none of the Mad staff went with them except one guy from production. Really? So that was the end of a real era because up until that point, all the editors and art directors were an extension of the Bill Gaines era that started in you know back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they all learned from the previous generation and it sort of kept uh, uh, that vibe together totally cut off. And so they, they hired Bill Morrison to be the new editor. And Bill was a great guy and really knew humor and stuff but he was never part of the original mad so it was a totally different voice you know um i thought they did a good job of keeping it still keeping it mad and yet updating it into the 21st century but then you know how it is bill got let go and the staff got reduced and the next thing you know now they're doing mostly reprint material and classic material every issue and only Maybe 20% new stuff. I do miss the movie parodies. I mean, that was like one of the, the staples of Mad Magazine is like right there in the centerfold is the Tom Richmond movie parodies, uh -huh. you know. the. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that was a classic part that's not there anymore. Yeah, that was something that really hit home because I did so many of those in the la over the last 20 years. And uh, like you say, it's a identifiable Mad Magazine staple, you know. And now they aren't doing them anymore. It was one very specific thing they cut out. Uh, but maybe that genre is going to continue because uh, Do De tell. Desmond Devlin, who is a writer for Mad for <clears throat> about 35 years, and myself, we collaborated on, I don't know, something like 50 movie and TV parodies in the last oh 20 God. years. Uh, well, we've got a little project, and um, we're going to maybe see a Kickstarter happen sometime next month. Really? And uh, we're going to try to see if we can continue the movie and TV parody tradition. Is this an official announcement on the uh, Trumpcast <laughs> Chuckload of Comics YouTube show? It's an official, unofficial announcement. Uh, there are, there are we a have few, applause from the audience out uh, there. There are a few <laughs> details to work out, but Des and I, you know, we've been doing this for decades, and... Um, We've got a lot to plan. In fact, work is being done. So, um, do you just have ideas like spilling over that you've been sitting on? Like, <laughs> oh my God, this movie is perfect for, you know, the, the Alfred E. Newman treatment or or yeah. anything like that. Is is well, I'll tell you what the genesis of the idea was that for the first time since Mad started, you know, well, in the history of Mad and the history of Star Wars movies. Rise of Skywalker will be the first movie that ha will not be parodied in wow. the magazine. Wow. Oh, that's a shame. That's crazy. So guess what our first movie parody is going to be? <laughs> Excellent. Oh, what are you going to call it? You already have a name picked out for Rise of Skywalker? Uh, I don't know if I should tell you that. <laughs> oh, you you got to go to the gonna, Kickstarter. Yeah. Like we got to warm up a little bit <laughs> <more> first. <laughs> yeah, but um, that's our first one. But we're all, So we're going to do new movies and maybe some TV shows too. But we're also going to do some of the movies that Mad never did. Yeah, and classics, you know, that are cult cult classics and movies that later on became big deals, but at the time they didn't get the treatment. That is awesome. So, uh, so you'll see a mix of classic movies and uh, new stuff, and um, you know, it should be fun. And Des and I are old hands at it, so uh, we'll see we'll see where it goes. But it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a lot of fun. When is the Kickstarter launch? Next month. Yeah. Don't have an exact date, but we're looking at probably right around the middle of the month, and uh, it's gonna be a hardcover book. Oh, nice. Shooting it, shooting for about 84 pages, but we'll have some stretch goals to add some extra pages as we go along. And uh, Maybe a fold-over or two? No, I don't know about that. I'll have to call <laughs> Al Jaffe and see if he'll let okay. us do that. <laughs> well, guys, find the, find the uh, Tom Richmond 
uh, Kickstarter launching uh, in a month or so. And yeah. definitely, you know, pour your money into it because this is an art form that's got to live on the movie parodies, Mad Style. Um, but speaking of Mad Style art, um, while we have you here, mm-hmm. I've always wanted to know, I mean, what are, like, when you approach, because your book right here, which I've read cover to cover two times, Awesome. Um, some amazing, uh, you, the way you approach pieces is almost mathematical. You've got certain things that you look for when you, like, take uh, my friend Smithers here, for example. <laughs> to sketch him, I mean, what's one of the first things you look at? Uh, like, what, what, what do you do when you're tackling a, a sketch? Well, there's two aspects to caricature, really. There's the, what I call the physical nature of a face, which mm-hmm. is just your features, right? So, like, the size of your chin doesn't change and the size of your nose doesn't change. That's... That's just the physical nature of the face. Uh, and then there's what I call the presence of a person. That's, that's the, their uh, personality, their, their presence, whatever you want to call it. And you're exaggerating both aspects. So, yeah, I mean, if you've got a big nose, that's obviously going to be something I'll exaggerate. But mm-hmm. I'm also looking to exaggerate what makes you you, you know, what makes you unique from other people in terms of your, you know, your your expression, you know, your your attitude, your personality, for whatever reason. I'm trying to exaggerate those things too. So, mm. raised eyebrows and you know, uh, uh, crooked grins and things like that that bring out the personality of somebody. You exaggerate those elements too. So, would uh, you have would you have time to maybe uh, do a quick sketch of our friend Smithers here? Sure. Oh boy. I'll probably. Uh, use this photo since he, since you won't have headphones on. I think he said something about your <laughs> nose earlier. I'm, I'm just like, I'm wondering if anybody ever walked up to you and just tried to start making fun of you, would you just decimate them immediately, pointing out all of their tiniest <laughs> little flaws? I assume that nobody can touch you in terms of that. Well, sadly, that's how I, I go through life. You know, it's <laughs> like... Um, I, I see everybody as a caricature, and uh, that's got to be torture. It. it sort of is, you know. In a lot of ways, it's very distracting in life. Like my wife and I have, um, we, we like theater, and we go see, uh, you know, pl- uh, musicals a lot. And we'll go to this show, and on the way home, she'll be saying, you know, she'll ask me, "So, what'd you think about, you know, the the show? What'd you think about this number and all this stuff?" And I'll be like, "I don't remember a thing about that show." Because there was this guy in the chorus that had this enormous forehead. <laughs> and every time he was on stage, I was like, look at that forehead. How can he even stand up? And, uh, and it distracts me. And it ruins Forget his singing voice. Me. Yeah, exactly. Like, I can't watch a John Travolta movie without seeing this pin. Big giant, like, yeah. This nail that's, that's been nailed into his chin. Right. This dimple that really is Im- an impossible uh, hole the- in his Kirk Douglas uh, butt <laughs> chin. Uh, Tom Cruise, I'm sure, has some and his some features tooth. you like to uh, has, accentuate. Tom Cruise has one big middle tooth. Does so he? Like, yeah, it's it's very strange. Yeah. I, if, if you Google Tom Cruise middle tooth, it will come up. I don't think I want to do that because once you see it, it you can't oh, unsee it. It will yeah. never leave your brain. That's true. His, his, his front teeth are, are off-center, and one of his front teeth is in the exact middle of his the, the axis of he his face. He knows. Guys, He's don't, don't ruin it's, Tom Cruise for me. Oh, well, that's what ruined sorry. Tom Cruise for you? I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I'm a big Tom Cruise fan. Tom, if you're watching this, you I like your middle tooth. I, li- I like your middle tooth just, just where it is, right in the middle. So i got to ask, uh, Mad Magazine was a huge impact on my smart ass you know sense of humor <laughs> as a kid how old were you when you drew your first alfred e newman oh wow uh, that's a good question um i was i discovered mad like right around fourth grade somewhere in there that's the perfect time yeah for the day. and my br- my my buddy uh had a subscription and so whenever he got his copy then we'd come we'd go over there and read it cover to cover and then we would draw our own um parodies of stuff Actually, early on, I was a big Don Martin fan, and I loved the Don Martin cartoon, so I would draw my own Don Martin characters with the floppy feet and that type of thing. And we also did, you know, the, we made up the wacky packages sort of stuff, which isn't, isn't really mad, but sort of in the same mad vein. And so we would do that. Uh, so probably I drew Alfred, like, maybe around fourth, fifth grade. You know, we would, so cool. We would throw him in to things that we were doing, and uh, that was a lot of fun. And... Um, that was my first exposure to mad and then i you know like a lot of a lot of times you sort of grow past that and i started you know reading regular comics and and that kind of thing and then when i got that i got a job doing caricatures at a theme park while i was going to college i read that in your book and uh so my first summer i moved down to chicago right down here was that great america right up the road here that's where we did them 
and uh, uh, I lived with a bunch of uh, other caricaturists, and uh, they all had these stacks of Mad magazines with them, and I hadn't seen one in probably about five, six, seven years, and so I, I looked at them, and I was like, wow, was the, was the artwork this brilliant when I was reading it when I was in fourth grade? And sure enough, I went back to all my old stuff, and Mort Drucker, Jack Davis, you know, uh, Angelo Torres... Al Jaffe, that all that stuff was just. I mean, that was what was so awesome about Mad was it was funny. It was juvenile. Sergio. Yeah. Sergio. It was funny. It was juvenile in times. It was smart at times, but they had some of the biggest legends in comics ever drawing for them. Yeah. I mean, their lineup was ridiculous. Absolutely. Yeah. Just Hall of Famers from top to bottom. Right, and the comedy is like it's it's the kind of thing you only appreciate more the older you get. You know, yeah. I can, you can go back and read a comic, uh, a Mad Magazine that you read when you were a kid, read it again with completely different eyes, and it's a whole other book. Yeah, it's very funny to go back and see the old stuff because, uh, you know, they're making fun of, like, hippie culture and <laughs> things that are, you know... A lot very, of drug references. Yeah, very much in, in the moment at the time. You oh, know? yes. And some of, that, some of that stuff didn't age real well, uh, you know. It's like, but a lot of it, it was, was uh, very astute. And when you're reading it today, you're like, wow, they were sort of ahead of their time predicting some of this stuff was going to happen. And it was pretty interesting. It's funny. I actually read um, it was it was published. I think it was like in the late 80s. Uh, the, the article in Mad was uh, headlines you're never, ever, ever going to see as long as you live. And one of them was Cleveland Indians and Chicago or Chicago Cubs beat Cleveland Indians in the World Series. <laughs> Wow, that's that's like the uh, Back to the Future. Yeah, it was insanity. Just like a year once on. that happened, it was just all over the news. They were like, oh, let's look back at Mad Magazine from 20 years ago, and it, they predicted Indians Cubs. That's beautiful, and the art style is so iconic for for Mad Magazine. I've got a, I've got one from Christmas of 1956 that my dad gave to me. He got wow. it when he was younger, so I've got it framed up in my basement. And I mean, the art style is it's so iconic. So I, w- when you ca- when you came on to Mad, was it? Hey, this is our style. I know that I don't know something like the Simpsons. They have very specific rules for what they're, you know, how you draw Homer. Uh, uh-huh. Were there w- was there a rule set for that when you got started? Actually, quite the opposite. Um, I it took me a little time to get into Mad. Uh, primarily, they told me because my work was a little too reminiscent of some of their classic artists, uh, particularly Mort Drucker. I mean, at the time, I, I had been sort of working at getting into Mad, so what do you do when you want to do that? You look at old Mad magazines, right? So I had a lot of more uh, influence in my work, um, and they, they, they were very, very specific about we don't want people to have, you know, styles too similar to our, some of the more identifiable artists. We want new voices. So actually... I didn't get into Mad for a while because I was too close to their style. Wow. And so what I did is I put all those Mad magazines away, and I started working on uh, the kind of storytelling and caricature stuff without actually looking at Mort's stuff and Jack's stuff and Wally Wood's stuff. And uh, then eventually I, I, I was able to show them, you know, something that's my voice and my visual look that's not, you know, based on somebody that they already had and, and then they gave me a shot so um, they no, they I know a lot of people look at it and go oh this is very mad magazine mm-hmm. right uh, but really there's a big difference between what I do and what Mort does and what Sam Viviano does and I mean it's all caricature that's very likeness based and very linear uh, but in the end it's you know still our own take on it so mm-hmm. Do you remember what you presented to them that, that kind of got you across that threshold? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I was, I was actually, I, I showed some stuff to them, uh, to Sam Viviano particularly. He, he had just become the art director for MAD. And I, I wrote and drew a parody of the, TV, of the movie Godzilla with Matthew Broderick from 1997. So mm-hmm. this was about 1998, maybe I showed him this stuff, 99. And uh, he said, yeah, you know, it looks pretty good. But, you know, again, with the Mort stuff and... So what I ended up doing is I showed that to Crack Magazine, that same thing. Yeah, they they immediately published it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And then I ended up doing movie parodies for Crack. Mm-hmm. And I did uh, uh, several of them. And the last one I did for Crack was uh, the movie Gladiator with uh, Russell Crowe. And I finished it, and I went and showed it to Sam Viviano. I happened to be in New York for the Cartoonist Society Rubin Awards. And um, I uh, showed it to him, and that was the piece that they were like, 
Oh, okay. So, so this is very much now you, and, and we'd, we'd love to have you work for MAD. They said, uh, we can't promise you when we'll give you a job, but we're definitely going to look into you know, having you do something for us sometime soon. But there's a problem. Uh, you currently have a by, you know, you currently have bylines in crack, like you're working for crack. So, we can, you can't have a byline in crack and mad at the same time. And I said, well, that's no problem. I don't work for crack anymore. Yeah, that was <laughs> and, just the one time. Yeah, and they're like, because I'd done like four or five issues at that point, and they're like, well, when did that happen? And I said, three seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, wait a minute now. We, we don't, we can't tell you exactly when I said, that doesn't matter. It's, you know, that's like if you're, you're playing uh, single A ball in Pensacola and the, and the, uh, the Yankees call yeah, you up. The Yankees <laughs> call you and say, hey, we want you to play in the bigs. Absolutely. You're like, ah, you know what? I really love Pensacola. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, that was a no brainer. All right. This is phenomenal. So what was the first thing? What, let's, 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 let's break it down. Let's analyze it and make Ryan feel real bad well, about himself. The first thing, I always look at the head shape. Mm-hmm. Like that's the absolute number one thing. So mm-hmm. if you can exaggerate the head shape at all away from that oval shape that everybody's got, then you're, you're good to go from the get-go. So you've got a very long face. You've know, uh, you got a big chin, chin and jaw. Um, you've got, you got like a pretty intense brow. And, and uh, you got this little smirk. <laughs> and so, Always uh, the smirk, yeah. yeah. So that's it. That's uh, tough to draw flat like that, but well, you did an excellent job. Oh, I thanks. wish I was that good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, that's, that's the theme park uh, thing, and I'm always playing for tips. So yeah. Well, Tom, thanks so much for coming by. I'm sure you know we're just kicking off the con right now. I'm sure you got a line of people over at your booth. Uh, where can people find you while you're while they're here? Well, I'm in Artist Alley, booth uh, H four. Okay. Yep. And uh, be doing my usual thing, making fun of people and getting them to pay me for it. Awesome. So That's the life. <laughs> well, Tom, thanks it's a lot, a guys. Gig. Remember, look for Tom's Kickstarter launches in about a month or so yes. for Movie Parodies, a hardbound book. Find it on Kickstarter really, really soon. And uh, stick around, guys, here on the Chumpcast and YouTube Chuck Load of Comics for con coverage all weekend long. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll see you around the con floor.